philosophy and literature and welcome to yet another lecture series on literature to kafi student aise hain jinko ye literary history trace karne mein bahut problems hoti hain hai na तो मैंने सोचा कि आई विल बिगिन विथ द इंटायर हिस्ट्री एंड आई विल गिव यू द आउटलाइन ऑफ एवरी ईयर एवरी एजेस सो दैट इट वुड बी इजियर फॉर यू टू यू नो बिगिन इफ बिगिन विथ योर स्टडीज सो जो भी नए स्टूडेंट्स हैं यू जी सीनेट के लिए उनके लिए बहुत ही मतलब किफाय किफ़ायतेमंद होगा ये लेक्चर ठीक है तो आप लोग प्लीज़ जुड़े रहिए सो द बिगिनिंग ऑफ इंग्लिस जनरली बिगिन फ्राम फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी टू टेन सिक्सटी सिक्स ठीक है ये सबसे पहला हमारा स्टार्ट uh, होता है जब लिटरेचर की बात होती है तो इसको कहते हैं ओल्ड इंग्लिस ठीक है ओल्ड इंग्लिस और एंग्लो सेक्शन भी बोला जाता है एंग्लो सेक्शन भी बोला जाता है ठीक है आप लोग अपने कॉपी पेन निकाल लीजिए और आप You can write it down in your uh, notebook because this is uh, this is going to be the the overview of entire history of English literature. Now, so old English में क्या क्या आते हैं जैसे Beowulf आता है है ना This is the this is the first longest poem or uh, the or also first longest poem first longest poem and this is also द फर्स्ट लॉन्गेस्ट एपिक उसके बाद आता है कैडमन एंड साइन ओल्फ साइन ओल्फ डोंट वरी आई विल मेक मैं अच्छे से डिटेल uh, से मैं uh, सारे एजेस के भी बारे में वीडियो बनाऊंगा सो दिस इज जस्ट एन आउटलाइन ठीक है नाउ वी विल मूव ऑन टू विल मूव ऑन टू the middle english period first we'll look at middle english period first all right middle middle english period so first of all we will look at middle english period theek okay? hai now middle english period begins in 1066 to 1500 theek okay? hai yaad rakhna apne aur first modern सॉरी बाई द डॉग्स एक्चुअली दिल्ली में काफ़ी कुत्ते हैं यार क्या करूँ फर्स्ट मॉडर्न पोइट इज चौसर ठीक है जेफरी चौसर एंड इज ऑल्सो द फादर ऑफ पोइट्री ठीक है फादर ऑफ पोइट्री जनरली कहीं लिखा नहीं गया है कि फादर ऑफ लिटरेचर भी है लेकिन इनको फादर ऑफ पोइट्री की वजह से फादर ऑफ लिटरेचर भी बोलते हैं ठीक है फादर ऑफ लिटरेचर भी बोलते हैं इनको नाउ अदर इम्पॉर्टेंट यू नो अदर इम्पॉर्टेंट फिगर्स आर लाइक थॉमस मेलोडी हो गए थॉमस मेलोडी हो गए मैं जस्ट ओवरव्यू दे रहा हूँ ठीक है ताकि आपको पता चले कि विच आर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फिगर इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एज बिकॉज दिस इज जस्ट एन आउटलाइन नाव रॉबर्ट हैंड्रिसन भी हो गए एच ई है एच ई एन हैंड्रिसन ठीक है फिर जैसे जॉन बार्बर भी हो गए आपके जो कि आई थिंक ये नेशनल पोइट हैं आपके स्कॉटलैंड के बार्बर विच इज़ ऑल्सो कंटेम्प्रेरी ऑफ जेफरी चौसर एक बार यू जी सी ने आज पूछ दिया था क्वेश्चन हु एमोंग दीज आर द कंटेम्प्रेरी ऑफ जेफरी चौसर सो जॉन बार्बर ठीक है ना दो चीज़ आपको याद रखनी है इसमें पहला कि थॉमस विट जो थे थॉमस विट इन्होंने इंट्रोड्यूस किया था इंट्रोड्यूस किया था सोनेट्स को ठीक है और दूसरा इम्पोर्टेंट है अर्ल ऑफ ई ए आर एल अर्ल ऑफ सरे इन्होंने इंट्रोड्यूस किया था ब्लैंक वर्स को ठीक है ब्लैंक ब्लैंक वर्स को ये दोनों इंपॉर्टेंट रखने आपको मिडिल मिडिल इंग्लिश पीरियड में ठीक है अब हम मूव ऑन करते हैं रेनेसा में अब रेनेसा आता है ठीक है देखिए मिडिल मिडिल इंग्लिश के बाद रेनेसा आता है 
मिडिल नेम से बाद क्या आता है रेनेसा आता है ठीक है लिख सकते हैं द रेनेसा आप लोग कॉपी में लिख लीजिए मिडिल नेम से बाद रेनेसा आता है अब रेनेसा तीन भागों में डिवाइडेड है पहले रेनेसा देख लेते हैं इनका ये पंद्रह से सोलह सौ ईस्वी तक होता है ठीक है और रेनेसा इज डिवाइडेड इंटू थ्री डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ठीक है सब डिवाइडेड कह सकते हैं आप सब सब डिवाइडेड इंटू फोर पार्ट्स ये जो आपका रेनेसा है ये चार भागों में डिवाइडेड है ठीक है अब देखिए चारों भाग पढ़ते हैं पहला है आपका एलिजा बिथनेज एलिजा बिथन एज ठीक है इसी में आपके विलियम शेक्सपियर आते हैं ठीक है बेन जॉनसन्स आते हैं ऐसे बेन जॉनसन्स जेकोविन में भी आते हैं या फिर आप कह लीजिए क्रिस्टोफर मार्लो हो गया एडमंड स्पेंसर हो गया ये सारे के सारे इसी में आते हैं सो फर्स्ट एलिजा बिथन एज है दूसरा आपका एज आता है जिकोबियन एज जिकोबियन एज ठीक है जिकोबियन एज होता है सिक्सटीन नॉट थ्री में और सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी फाइव तक चलता है ठीक है तीसरा आपका आ गया द कैरोलाइन पीरियड क्वीन कैरोलाइन द कैरोलाइन एज ठीक है और ये आपका होता है सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी फाइव टू सिक्सटीन फोर्टी नाइन और आपका चौथा हो गया कॉमनवेल्थ पीरियड कॉमन देखिए क्वेश्चन आ गया था एक बार नेट में कि विच अमॉन्ग दीज ईयर्स बिलोंग टू कॉमन वेल्थ पीरियड ठीक है तो आपको ये बहुत अच्छे से याद रखना है इससे क्या आपको हेल्प मिलेगी ना कि जब क्रोनोलॉजिकल क्वेश्चन आएंगे ना तो क्रोनोलॉजिकल क्वेश्चन आप इजिली कर पाओगे है ना ठीक है हमने देख लिया सो एलिजाबिथ एन एज इज ऑल्सो नोन एज अ गोल्डन एज ऑफ इंग्लिश ड्रामा एंड इम्पोर्टेंट राइटर्स वेयर क्रिस्टोफर मॉडलो क्रिस्टोफर मार्लो फ्रांसिस बेकन एडमंड स्पेंसर सर वॉल्टर रेले इवन विलियम शेक्सपियर राइट नाउ विल मूव ऑन टू जिकोबियन एज सो जिकोबियन एज दैट हैपन बिटवीन सिक्सटीन नॉट थ्री टू सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड सम ऑफ द मोस्ट मेजर फिगर इन दिस एज वेयर जॉन डन जॉन डन यू नो मेटाफिजिकल पोइट्री सो मेटाफिजिकल पोइट्री हैपन्स इन जिकोबियन एज और राइट ऑल्सो शेक्सपियर वॉज ऑल्सो राइटिंग इन जिकोबियन एज देन वी हैव माइकल ड्राइटन Michael Dryden, then John Webster, Elizabeth Carey, Ben Jonson is again a very important figure in Jacobian age. Ben Jonson, and then uh, King James version, King James Bible was also introduced in Jacobian period. All right, do remember this. King James Bible was also introduced in Jacobian period. Now, uh, in Caroline age, uh, what happens is that the Charles, Charles first was on the throne. All right, on the throne. Now I will I will teach you these two uh, in in separately. So in Caroline is Caroline is that happened in sixteen twenty five to sixteen forty nine. Right. Now, you know, in this period, Charles the first, Charles the first, uh, you know, came on throne, and uh, important figures were like John Milton, John Milton, Robert Burton, even George Herbert, है ना? Now next comes the Commonwealth, common wealth period. This is very very important period. You know why? Because, uh, because in the common wealth period, what happened is the. So this basically this period was between the end of English Civil War, between the end of. English Civil War and restoration of Stuart monarchy. Restoration of Stuart monarchy. 
so they can directly ask you questions uh, in which age do we find uh, that the beginning of the civil uh, uh, that the end of the civil war and the restoration of the Stuart monarchy now let's understand uh, what actually happened in this in this particular age so in commonwealth oliver cromwell was very important figure oliver cromwell so he is the most important figure in this particular age uh, and he was protestant he was protestant and uh, and there was a civil war going on between protestant and the catholic all right now this protestant king this oliver cromwell he when he became the king he killed the charles the first he killed charles the first he hanged the charles he hanged charles the first and then he became the king and once he became the king he actually uh, you know did two things he did very horrible thing he uh, you know destroyed all the theater all the theater from england in 1642 do remember this is very important date 1642 is very important because in 1642 oliver cromwell uh, you know uh, decided to destroy all the theater in england now uh, in this period uh, another figure who is known as john milton i'm sure you know about him and thomas hobbes they were writing political they were writing political Uh, they were writing you know political stuff you can say so all all their political milton and thomas hobbes political uh, uh, you know writings appeared in in the in the period of commonwealth commonwealth because in commonwealth when all the theater were destroyed no one was writing drama so drama was almost dead drama was almost dead and it was dead uh, until 1666 when again charles the second the charles the first you know came back to england and you know uh, decided to rule the england so uh, uh, so uh, now i hope uh, you got this point because this is very important that's why i gave you uh, a time to uh, that's why i gave you time to you know that's why I, uh, anyway now neoclassical is then comes the neoclassical is neoclassical is so in neoclassical is happens between 1662 1785 and this is also divided into different different ages so neoclassical is is divided into three different ages the first is the first age is restoration restoration is so it's 1662 1700 then comes the the augustan age you can put the the augustan the augustan age from 1700 to 1745 and then comes the age of sensibility age of sensibility 1745 to 1785 all right so uh, neoclassical is divided into three different ages so first age is restoration is happens 1660 to 1700 then augustan is 1700 to 1745 and then age of sensibility 1740 to 1785 now the age of sensibility is also very important because in this age we find the four pillar of uh, uh, english novelist so who who were the who who are the four pillars well henry fielding henry fielding samuel richardson samuel richardson tobias smollett and the fourth important figure was Lawrence Sutton, yes, that's right. Lawrence Sutton, Stern, you can say Lawrence Stern. So these these four were the uh, 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 not were the but these four are the uh, you know pillar of English novels. All right. Now uh, there is one thing you need to uh, remember is that in Augustan is 
in Augustan in Augustan is uh, we find Daniel Defoe Daniel Defoe's work. So Daniel Defoe he is known to be the first novelist, first person who published novel, who published a novel. All right. And uh, in Augustan is uh, Alexander Pope was writing, Jonathan Swift was writing. Again, Jonathan Swift is very important figure. Jonathan Swift he was writing in the Augustan age. As W I F T, he is a one of the biggest satire in in the history of English literature. All right. Now we will move on to. Uh, there is another thing you need to uh, remember from restoration is. I didn't write it down there. So in restoration is. In restoration is that happens between. 1600 to 1700 we also find uh, the comedy of manners happens you know the comedy of manners the the comedies of manners so do you know who were the figure of comedy of manners like William Congrave William is very important work uh, the way of the world so the way of the world is very important work the way of the world is very important work by William Congreve you see generally asked questions from this particular chapter you know there is a character called Milament and Mirabel and Miramant anyway now uh, in this age we also find Afra Ben Afra Ben A P H R A F R A Ben so she is the first woman not exactly but still she is the first woman who writes a uh, drama so if you remember ornoko the work o r n o something like that ornoko and the another work is uh, something the rover r o v e r so these are very important works by afra Wayne. and she was writing in the restoration is all right now uh, we have already seen the restoration is uh, we have seen uh, the augustan is we have seen the age of sensibility right now uh, we will move on to the next part which is which is called the romantic age now now comes the romantic age the the romantic uh, the romantic age which is again i think this age is favorite uh, of many many people by the way i'm i'm not a very big fan of romantic age except for john keats because i love keats and except for keats i don't find romantic is that interesting well it's up to individual right so romantic is happens between 1785 to 1832 so this romantic is is uh, is known to be uh, the beginning of the lyrical ballads. so if this happens with the beginning of the actually the lyrical ballads which was published by two very important figure lyrical ballads this was uh, actually published by two very important figure one is William Wordsworth and William Wordsworth and S. T. Coleridge. They were very close, close friends. All right, S. T. Coleridge. So this is the mark, uh, and this was published in. Uh, this was published in. Uh, just give me a second. When was the date? Uh, I think uh, 1798, 97, 98. I'm pretty sure yeah this was published in 1798 so this is the uh, this marked the beginning of the romantic age and now uh, another thing you need to re uh, also remember that uh, uh, this romantic age ends with ends with the reform bill so reform bill was introduced introduced at the end of the romantic age and at the beginning of the victorian age beginning of the victorian age so the reform bill was introduced in the beginning of the victorian age and at the end of the romantic age you can also understand and this was also the the end of uh, sir walter sir walter scott sir walter scott so you can say that the uh, uh, that the romantic period begins with lyrical ballads uh, in 17 1798 and ends with the passes of reform bill and the death of the sir walter scott all right now some of the important figure in romantic is i think we already know that it was uh, lord byron william Wordsworth, and then st coleridge 
John Keats. How can you forget about Keats? And then we have uh, uh, another uh, very important figure, uh, is, which is which is also known as, uh, which is also again my favorite uh, poet, John Keats. And then Percy by C. Sally, another very important figure. Now you can also, uh, I think, I think, um, see, many people forget about you know Charles Lamb, who is very important figure. Charles Lamb, who wrote uh, Elia. So Charles Lamb is very uh, again very important figure. He was he was a prose writer, all right. Charles Lamb was a prose writer, and then we have uh, uh, Thomas de Quincey, who was a who was a very important uh, philosopher of the Romantic age. Thomas D. Quincy. He, write, he wrote a, a book called, um, what was that book? Uh, let, me, let me remember. Sometimes I forget about, uh, you know, the, book, the books. So Thomas D. Quincy published The Confession of the English Opium Eater. The Confession, yes. The Confession of the English Opium Eater. Sometimes UGC asks such questions in English. Opium Eater. So they will give you, uh, you know, you know one two three four uh, authors and they will ask you to match with their works so these kind of question comes so please do remember the confusion of the english opium eater was written by thomas de Quincey, who was a romantic period philosopher or you can say he was a prose writer as well now another very important figure was mary wollstonecraft mary wollstonecraft m-a-r-m -A -A, mary wollstonecraft So she was very important figure. You know why? Because she wrote a work called The Vindication of the Rights of the Woman. The Vindication of the Rights of the Woman. Very important work. All right. Very, very important work. So because this is this is also the mark of the first wave of feminism first wave of feminism so when we talk about the first wave of feminism mary wollstonecraft comes in the in the very top of of that particular list all right now we see the victorian age now we come to the victorian age so after romantic we come to the victorian age victorian period and and this happens between 1832 to 1901 now you need to understand that the uh, Victorian period is also divided into three different different parts. One is pre, one is mid, mid Victorian, and one is later Victorian period. Now, the pre Victorian happens between 18, 1832 to forty eight. Mid happens between eighteen forty eight to seven. Sorry, eighteen forty eight to seventy and later part 1862 1901 1901 now pre-raphaelite brotherhood pre-raphaelite brotherhood belongs to the victorian period do remember that pre-raphaelite brotherhood belongs to the victorian period you know uh, some of the important figure arts robert and elizabeth barrett browning right Christina Rossetti, so is also uh, again uh, the member of pre raphaelite Another figure is uh, another uh, important figure is Alfred Lord Tennyson. Tennyson was a very important poet of the Victorian period. And then Thomas Carlyle. Thomas Carlyle. You know Thomas Carlyle. What what did he write? Uh, Thomas Carlyle was a philosopher and a pro and a prose and a prose writer. He wrote a book called Hero and Hero Worship. Hero and Hero Worship, which was highly influenced by Frederick Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche. All right. Uh, again, this is why he becomes a very important figure because he talks about the hero and hero worship. He says that the history uh, remembers the hero, not the losers something like that this is very again important uh, philosophical work now another very important uh, figure is charles dickens i'm sure you all know charles he's my favorite uh, poet sorry uh, my favorite novelist charles 
Dickens, and then uh, we have Bronte sister also. Bronte sisters were also writing in the Victorian part in the Victorian age. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gaskill was also writing in Victorian age. And then, if you remember, Walter Pater again, very important figure. Walter Pater, Walter Pater, who was also writing in the Victorian age, and in this he was he belonged to the Oxford moment. Many times UGC has asked this question: Who belongs to the Oxford moment? So uh, uh, you can take you can take a look. Now Matthew Arnold is also a very important figure. Matthew, E R. Matthew Arnold is again very important figure of the Victorian age. Now again George Eliot. How can I forget about Eliot? George Eliot. Her name was her real name was yes Mary Ann Evans. Mary Ann Evans. Uh, Thomas Hardy was also Thomas. Hardy was also writing in the Victorian period, but he was writing in the later Victorian period. And at the end of the Victorian age, he became the poet. So he also comes in modern modern time. He is also he also comes in a modern, or you can say the Edward Edwardian era, which is the next era. So Thomas Hardy, at the end of his career, he stopped writing novels and he started writing poetry. So he's more he's as he's a uh, he's important in poetry as well as uh, I mean. Equally, is is important in both uh, in novels as well as in poetry. Now, William Makepeace Thackeray is also William Makepeace Makepeace Thackeray. William Makepeace Thackeray was also writing in the Victorian era, and he was born in Mumbai. They have asked this question like uh, uh, Makepeace Thackeray was born in which place? So it was Mumbai. Now. Now, uh, after Victorian age, we see the Edwardian era, which is very small era. Edwardian era, <laughs> and this happens between nineteen o one to nineteen fourteen. And some of the most important uh, uh, writers were like Joseph Conrad, Joseph Conrad. You know Ford Max Ford, Ford Max, Ford, Kipling. By the way, I hate Kipling because, and also do remember, Rudyard Kipling was the first. Uh, I mean, he was he is the youngest Nobel Prize winner. Nobel Prize winner. The youngest Nobel Prize winner is the Rudyard Kipling. But I hate him because he wrote a book called uh, The White Man's Burden. The White Man's Burden. Do check it out. The White. Man's burden. I don't know how they gave him the Nobel Prize. Still, still, you know, I ask question myself. How did he get the Nobel Prize in literature? Anyway, I think uh, that was the time when everyone was hating, you know, black people. So people of uh, c- uh, of different color, people of color, were not seen, you know, important for the white people for the white supremacy. Now another important figure is Henry James. Uh, again, I have made a video on Henry James. Please go and check it out. Henry James, W. B. Yeats, Wilfred Owen, Wilfred Owen, uh, Wilfred Owen. Yes. So next we are uh, okay. There were few dramatists as well. Dramatist in Edwardian era. In in Edwardian era, so John Galsworthy, very important figure. John Galsworthy, very very important figure. John Galsworthy, and then we have G. B. Saw. G. B. Saw, who was highly influenced by Nietzsche, by the way. George George Bernard Shaw was influenced by Nietzsche's Superman, the concept of Superman. Superman. That's why he wrote Man and Superman. Now we move on to the Georgian period. The Georgian 
we move on to the Georgian period. And the Georgian period happens between 1910 to 1936. So some of the important figures are John Mansfield, Rupert Brooke, all the war poet belongs to the war. War poets belongs to the Georgian period. All right. Now we come to the modern age. Then we come to the modern age. Modern age or modern period, you can say 1914 to what? 1945. This is basically the 19. 1945 is the modern period so some of the important figure are like T.S. Eliot Anna T.S. Eliot Virginia Woolf G.I.N. Virginia Woolf and then D.H. Lawrence yeah Conrad is also there Joseph Conrad Dorothea Richardson Graham Greene Graham Greene was also also comes in the modern age. these are very important figure there are a lot of figures in uh, in modern age so i'm not going to write it down all you have to remember the modern age uh, is from 1914 to 1945 basically the modern age comes in the world war world war era world war era don't you find it's very uh, unusual that all the second world war happens in europe and yet europe is the most uh, most of the european countries are are you know they are they are above or they are you know at the top of the happy happiness index this is very crazy i don't know how but anyway uh now we move we move on to post modernism post modern period and this post modern happens between 14 sorry 1945 to what mostly no one is no no one knows because uh, many people claim that uh, the death of the Beckett and you know the death of the Beckett is the death of the postmodernism. So there is a book called I don't remember the, the that particular book name, but when I was reading that particular book, so it, it was uh, given in that there was this character who says that uh, uh, do you not know that the postmodernism is dead? I can tell you exactly on which date postmodernism died, and he said the death the death of the Beckett. Uh, was the death of the postmodernism anyway you can also say we are living in postmodern age or post pro modern age whatever you want to call it so postmodernism is so many different different things like angry young man the group of angry young man is a drama group and then we also see the kitchen sink drama kitchen sink drama UGC has asked many questions from these two and some of the important figure is Samuel Beckett. How can I forget about Beckett? Is my favorite. So Samuel Beckett is again uh, comes in the postmodernism age. He is known as the absurdist. Absurdist. I've made a video on on all these things. I've made the video on the entire history of English literature. Please do check it out. All right. And now I'm trying to uh, make a complete video on the entire history of English literature. That was the video of entire history of. Uh, uh, literary theory and criticism and this video is uh, and this is the beginning of the entire history of English literature I hope uh, now there is another figure that uh, uh, now that so in this age in uh, 2022 you can say we are living in the age of we are living in the age of post humanism post humanism so post-humanism is very important, uh, 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 you know, in modern time. And there is another very important thing that is happening in present time is is the study of. Uh, actually, uh, we studied this particular topic in our PhD coursework. Uh, I'm forgetting the name. Just give me a second, and I will recall the name. Uh, one was the post-dramatic theatre post dramatic theater and the performance studies P E R F O R and performance studies very important now most of the universities they teach performance studies and then gender studies again very important gender studies for today's anyway uh, that's all for today i will see you in the next one 
in the next video we will study uh, the old english we will cover the old english and the middle english in one video all right and then we will move on to renaissance thanks for watching uh, and please do uh, write your comment down below so that i can improve myself so that i can prove whatever whatever you want uh, me to uh, do in this video whatever you want me to change in this video please do do write it write down below so that you know i can also be motivated thanks for watching see you in the next one